Now it's time to get in and do our bearing preloads. Um, just before I do that, I was watching David Richards the other day on his channel and he had his old planer machine cranked up. And he had this book. I recognised the cover of the book from... And I thought, I've got one of those. Well, it's a similar. Mine's an old lathe book. This used to belong to my dad. And yes, yeah, great, these old books. One thing you do have to double check when you use a lot of this old reference material, and the same would apply to nowadays. Um, there are, I was turning a taper one day, and the information uh, on the taper per foot chart on the taper I was doing uh, was wrong. Um, I've only come across it once before, and when I double checked it with an, another book, and then a third book, and then did the actual calculations. Yeah, it turned. I'm not sure which book I was looking at. I can't remember. I'll have to put a mark on it. But yeah, always double check um, that they haven't done a, a misprint on, on these charts. So yeah, always goes back to double check your formulas. So anyway, let's carry on with our bearing preload. Okay, so first thing we need to do is give our hub a quick wipe out. Make sure we've got no crap gone into our races. So we have our two cones. We put one in the bottom, one in the top. So what we need to do is we need to get an approximate measurement back to back inside. So it only needs to be approximate at this stage. So if you looks to be we've got, it's, it's hard to see because I'm looking at the ruler on an angle. We've got about nine millimetres. So we need to make a spacer. The well, starting point for, with our spacer will be nine millimetres wide. And what the spacer is for is when these bearings are held together with our end cap and everything's tightened up, the preload of our bearing does not alter. So off camera I made up a tool to push the bearings onto the shaft as these bearings are a very neat fit on the shaft they're not a they're not a, a drop fit or anything so this will push the bearing on the inner race only and seeing as there's a little bit of stock left over we'll make our spacer out of this aluminium bar now for all intensive purposes for what these things do I think aluminium will be fine it does not have to be a hardened and ground spacer as you would use if you're setting up pinion in a large truck differential or something like that. That's a different kettle of fish. So we'll part a piece off nine millimeters and then we'll have our first trial. So over to the lathe. So nine millimetres, a bit over, it doesn't matter. You don't want to, I don't want to go under because I don't want to have to make two of these. Well, that's the aim anyway, but sometimes you have to. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll get rid of that ring on the outside. 
you know, we're coming up to the last um, turning job we're doing on this. I'm going to have to pull up and stop after this job because I want to replace the bearings on the counter shafts and the headstock. And my plan was to do that over Christmas. But, you know, plans change, but we'll tr try and stick to the plan. So we'll see how we go. Okay, deburr. Certain device. Bit of finger pressure down. Turn it 90 degrees. Go the other way. There's our burr gone. So I'll pop this back in the lathe and use our rotary tool or handheld tool to get that ragged edge off. all it needs. Okay, head back to the bench and we'll do a test fit. So, one bearing, our hub, our spacer, our second bearing, and our retainer washer. Retainer washer Mark II as we had that bit of a mishap with the first one. Okay, so what we need to do is reduce the thickness of our spacer to get rid of that, that play. So with an indicator mounted up as you can see we can move our hub up and down and we have 0 0.33 millimeters of play. So let's take 0.3 millimeters off our spacer. No, let's take 0.2 millimeters off our spacer. I don't want to overcut it and have to make another one. So we'll take 0.2 off and then we'll have another trial fit.
Okay, we'll try that. That's running within a thou, or about a thou. Now yeah, that's point two. We'll deburr that. Okay, back to the bench. Spacer on, hub and bearing on. Still got play. Put our retainer cap on. Like that. Okay, that's reduced to point zero one two. Sorry, did I say point zero one two? Point one two. Okay, so we'll take another point one off. We might take the whole lot here, point one two. We'll see how we go. So point one two to come off. This is the stage where we need to make sure our spacer is parallel. If it's not, we need to mark the spacer according, accordingly and take that into account when we rechuck it. So we're uh, 351 and a half, 351, 351. Uh, 351 and a half. So we're within half a thou. So we'll just set that up um, with the indicator true again and we'll take 0.12 of a millimetre off. We're just shy of that I think. We'll be on the safe side. Okay now we're going to take it off the side that we, or the opposite side to what we just took it off. Very light contact, very light grip pressure. So we don't want to crush it.
So that's running at two thou. That's the high spot there. That's running at half a thou. Very light nip. Actually, that's just less than half a thou. That. Okay. So what did we say? Point one. Yeah, we'll go with point one. Now, I'm going to actually, because it's aluminium, it's so soft, I'm just going to do the touch off by, well, hang on, let's re-zero our compound first. We'll get it on a whole number anyway. Okay, we're just going to touch off by hand. Like there, lock the carriage, start the lathe. Put it in gear, start the lathe. Right, back to the bench. Okay, test fit number three. Space is on, hub and bearing are on. Yeah, bolt a good nip. I can't feel anything by hand there. Let's see what the indicator picks up. Point zero two millimeters. Sometimes with taper rollers, it pays to to seat the rollers, the bottom rollers. Just puts a bit of lightwood pressure down and just rock the part. What happens sometimes? The rollers can sit up, can hang up. Okay, so we have point zero two of a millimeter. See that go away. So we'll just take a, a whisker off. We're not going to do it on the lathe. We'll use a piece of wet and dry on a flat machine surface. Before we do it, recheck our parallelism. Three forty seven, three forty seven and a half, three forty seven, three forty eight. Okay, let's just give this a quick rub there with some wet and dry. Okay, so we're only talking like seven tenths of a thou. So I'm just milling the machine table, and all I'm going to do a couple of light rubs, one on that side. One on that side. Let's reassemble. Make sure our shaft is tight and chuck. <coughs> Good nip down on that.
and we're 0 0.01 of a millimetre. Okay, now, because this is going to be a grease-packed bearing, I'm very tempted to leave that, leave that be, 0 0.01 clear air. Let's just take a fraction more. Just a whisker. And I mean a whisker. Hang on, I'll bring you back. Now what I should be doing now is actually using a torque wrench on that. So we're pulling this um, retainer down to the exact same amount every time. Make sure our bearings, lower cone roll, or the lower cone rollers are seated. So we're pulling that to zero two now. Okay, let me go and get a torque wrench set up, and then we can be sure we're pulling this to the exact same tension every time we try it. Okay, so we'll use a torque wrench. We're set on 35 foot pound, which is standard bolt torque for the 38 UNC high tensile bolt. It's a bit of jiggling to get it. Okay. Reset our indicator. That's good, we're there. Let's bring you in closer. So wiggle, make sure our bearings are seated. And I'm wiggling as I'm lifting as well to, to make sure the top bearings are seated. So I'm getting 0 0.02, so I might just take one more whisker um, off our spacer. And I'll bring you back when we've done that. And of course, Mr. Bozo here pressed stop instead of record when he did that, so let's do it again. So we had 0 0.02 before, I just took another whisker off and tensioned it down properly, so pushing down, pulling up, We've got 0 0.01 millimetres there. I'm going to let that go because these bearings are packed with grease and I don't want this thing to run too hot. If it gives any trouble, I can always take a whisker more off. But I can't put it back on without making another spacer. So I'm confident that 0 0.01 millimetre end float, um, I think will be fine. So I'll break the setup down now. And we'll do a final setup on our proper shaft. So this has got to be everyone's favourite job. Packing. Packing taper roller bearings. Just 
keep pushing the grease through with your palm of your hand and eventually you'll see it ooze out the other side of the bearing. So you can see it's just starting to ooze out there now. So you just work your way around. And I'll bring you back when I've got them both packed. <laughs> oh, there we go. One. So these are a firm on our shaft. There's no clearance whatsoever between the bearing and the shaft. Make sure he's... That's it. That is beautiful. So now the little cavity in between, we'll just put a bit of grease around as well. That will do it. Doesn't need to be over greased or anything like that, you don't, just a little bit in there. That's all it needs. Our spacer. Our other bearing. Now I need to give that a very slight tap down. Our end cap. Okay, so I'm going, I'm going to have to put this in the uh, lathe tail stock, so it will hold it while we torque up the retainer cap. Okay. What we can do now, we can put an indicator on this face, and this will be the final test to see how we um, how we did with all our hub alignment with the bearings. So we're getting a good good reading there. Once we click, well, once we're clear of the holes. So I think that's a good result, so I think we'll mount the chuck up on it now. Well we've got to put the oil seals in first, so we'll do that. Now we'll get our seals in. Here's a trick for young players that have maybe not messed with oil seals very much. To make the seal work properly, they have this exciter ring, which puts the pressure on the lip of the seal. Now, these you can pull apart, there's a join in them, you can unscrew them. So if you're caught out in a situation where you've got a worn shaft and you can't stop this, a new seal leaking oil, you can actually unscrew these, get a set of side cutters, cut a few coils out, re-screw them together and that will put a bit more tension on the uh, lip of the seal. It's an old trick. The other thing you can probably you can have when putting in an oil seal, a lip type seal with a spring set up behind it, as you're hammering in, when the seal bottoms out on the shoulder that it sits in, if it has a shoulder that it sits in, some just hammer and flush, some come up against the shoulder. Well you'll find that last hit, when it comes up against the shoulder, can actually pop, that spring will pop off, jump out. So, to prevent that happening, if you pack the rear of the seal with grease, like so, I'll do the other one while I've got greasy fingers, that will prevent that spring jumping out.
Okay. We're just positioning it over the shaft. Like so. Just give him the final tap home. Looks like we're there. That actually needs to go in about another millimetre deeper. As the little lip that keeps the dirt out of the seal, we're not quite over the end yet, so I'll have to um, get a, a ring, go and look for a ring so I can push that in the final millimetre. So we'll move to the front seal. Now, the bearing retainer doubles up as a seal runner. So the inside of the seal will run on that bearing retainer. Right. Same deal. And we'll have to do the same with this one too. So I'll go and find something we could just push, push these seals in a bit further, and I'll come bring you back. Okay, we just machined a little uh, step on this piece of scrap, and this will allow the uh, bearing, uh, sorry, the seal to be pushed in another bit over a millimetre. Looking all right. And the same with the other side. Okay. Just firmed it up now with that, with that seal, but that'll free up. Okay, so we can go ahead now and bolt up our chuck. Okay,
Well, it feels really good. It's not loose, it's not tight. There's a lot of drag on those seals. And of course with the grease as well. But as that grease sorts itself out and, and works its way to a spot where it's supposed to sit, should be good. Well, I think the only thing left now is um, for a test run, eh? What do you reckon? Okay, say we're in a case where we do have to machine the entire length of the bar. Um, what you can do is use a small spacer. That goes up against the chuck jaws. So when your tool runs off at the end, you're not going to hit the jaws. The other thing with hollow bar, it's not always, it's not really round in the middle. So when you put it in your chuck, you actually got to pick the highest, the larger um, sections which will rock between two jaws. When, when you can feel that, you go in the middle, give it a bit of a nip up. Okay, now we can bring our tail stock chuck in. Okay. I'm just rocking the chuck around. It locks up that way and that way, coming in the um, middle position. I'm leaving a little gap there. Okay, so we nip up both chucks. Get rid of our chain. Make sure we're nice and tight. Okay. Make sure we've got clearance. Let's see how back, how far back we can come. Make sure the chuck jaws don't hit the cross slide. Okay. Say for example we had to turn a steady rest band on it to put our steady on in case we had other features to machine on the end. Just engage our feed. Plow in. So that was quick and easy. Now if you wanted to you can mount your steady rest up and continue machining your features on the end or whatever you have to do. Okay so we'll go for the scenario where we have to turn this entire length without taking it out of the machine.
Okay, so I'll switch our tool around now. There's a bit around here that hasn't cleaned up, but, but that doesn't matter for what we're doing. It's just for demonstration purposes. Reverse our feed direction, away we go. Sorry, you guys went out of, out of the shot for a while. So yeah, I've reversed to a uh, left-hand tool, which turns in the right-hand direction, so we can now finish off the other end of our tube. Just making sure when the tool comes to the end, you have got clearance. And of course, don't forget to reverse your feed direction. So there we have it, the um, two main uses of our tailstock chuck. The chuck performed well. No heating up issues here. No chatter issues or anything like that. Performed quite well for its first use. I probably won't keep this chuck on here, I'll probably get another chuck the same size for it purely because it's easier to buy another chuck than to try and track down another set of reverse jaws. So I do have a couple of chucks like that, I don't have the reverse jaws. One of them is a, is a really good bison chuck too, so being a bison, I might be able to track down uh, jaws for that one. But, um, as for this little Chinese one here, um, I'm not holding my breath, but you never know. I'll have a bit of a look around. So yeah. So I hope you've um, got something out of the series. Um, and for those that are interested in building it, um, they are a very limited use item. Like you'll go for yonks and not use it, but then a job will come along, and you'll say, "Wish I had a four jaw tailstock chuck." So, got a simple, cheap item to build it, providing you if you already have a chuck and enough scrap metal, scrap tonium laying around to, to build the thing. So, anyway, it's been a good series. Cheers, thanks for watching, and it may be the last bit of turning we do in this lathe for a while, as I do plan over the Christmas period to pull part of the headstock apart and fit new bearings to the counter shafts as they're starting to get a bit grumbly. And I'd rather do the bearings now before anything failed or anything happened and you know caused a big issue. So okay. And lastly, I do have to, well, dependent on the weather, I do have to slow down the videos for the next month as I have the entire month off work and I'm working full steam ahead on the new shop build. The only time I'll stop is when it gets too hot to work or in climate weather. If that's the case, then I'll be able to play around with the lathe a bit more. I might get that headstock pulled down. And then, uh, then we've got to get back onto this blooming grinding attachment that we've been putting off for so long and get that one out of the way. So, anyway, cheers. And we'll see you before Christmas because I will have a shared update. So, thanks for watching. <laughs>